Speed reading's appeal is obvious. Imagine all the time you'd save if your brain could just absorb huge Russian novels like War and Peace in a single afternoon. Notice how her hand glides down each page, how swiftly it goes. Speed reading salesmen have been making that very pitch for decades. You can become a dynamic reader in a free reading dynamics lesson designed to increase your reading speed well over 50%. From New York, The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson. Back in the 70s, Johnny Carson viewers tuned in to witness superhuman feats of reading. She reads 13,000 words a minute, and she's only 13 years old. Lately, speed reading has been making a comeback, this time with a digital makeover. New apps and browser plugins say they can train readers to plow through a thousand words per minute. That's about triple the speed most of us read at naturally. I wanted to know if I could ever read that fast, so I visited the experts at UC San Diego. So welcome to the Rainer Eye Tracking Lab. This is where researcher Elizabeth Schotter crushed my dreams. The science doesn't back, um, back up most of the claims of speed reading. Schotter explains that pretty much all college-educated people read somewhere between 200 and 500 words per minute. Sure, you could try reading faster, but kiss comprehension goodbye. You're not going to get as much out of something that you just blow through. Take one new company getting lots of attention lately. It's called Spritz, and it's largely based on a system that's been around for a while called RSVP. No, not that RSVP. RSVP stands for Rapid Serial Visual Presentation. Basically, Spritz breaks down sentences into individual words. It aligns those words in a little rectangle, and then it flashes them at the reader one after another really quickly. One way RSVP cuts down on reading time, it prevents you from rereading. Schotter wanted to test out what would happen to comprehension if people couldn't reread. So she designed an experiment that took away people's ability to go back in the text. So if you can just put your chin in the chin rest, this is just to make sure that you don't move around too much. Subjects stuck their face inside a rectangular frame. A machine above their head bounced infrared light into their eyes to see exactly where they were looking. From this fixed point of view, subjects read complicated sentences displayed on a computer monitor in front of them. John struggled to finish the land renovations before it went on the market. Later, they had to answer yes or no questions about these sentences. Did John finish easily? No. He struggled. And the eye tracking machine knew when they finished reading each word. While the baboons laughed, the baby baboon hung on the branch. What we did is we replaced each letter in a word with an X after the person moved past it. On a special night, you can see the stars at a celebrity in Hollywood. <laughs> Subjects did much worse answering questions about what they'd read when the X's blocked them from rereading. When they could read normally, without the words turning into X's right before their eyes, they got more questions right. When they felt like they needed more information from the text, then they went back to look at a, a word. They're looking at X's, so they're not getting any information from it. And that's when comprehension is poorest. To companies like Spritz, rereading may seem inefficient. But Schotter's study suggests that reading without rereading isn't really reading at all. On their website, Spritz claims their app is based on science, but they don't cite any papers published in peer-reviewed journals, and they didn't return my request for an interview. Schotter says tech startups may never find a way to hack the reading process. It's a really complicated process that I don't know if there are any shortcuts around. Humans have been reading words laid out on static surfaces for thousands of years. If there were a better, quicker way to do it, Schotter suspects we would have discovered it by now. David Wagner, KPBS News.